Hello guys and girls and welcome to a really good video at the start of a really good 2019 ah! Happy 2019 guys and girls I hope you guys have had an epic new year and I hope you, all of your friends and family and loved ones may you have a prosperous new year and make 2019 yours thank you for joining me on this video i want to talk about something that i feel is very important for my channel and channels alike hear me you're six years old you just moved to another country and you don't know the language but don't panic you will learn. As with everything, you will learn. And you know what? You have that sort of determination about you. You have that fire, that edge about you that will never give up no matter how hard you try. Dear six-year-old me, you haven't been able to walk since birth. As of right now, I believe you'd be in a manual chair. That's fine. Everyone is born with a difference. Everyone is born for a reason. Think of your wheels as your legs. It will take you a long way. From that point on, you start to pick up the language. Going to a school that has nursery, primary, and secondary. You catch on. You learn a few words, you learn the names of colours, you start to communicate. You build friendships and for some reason people like you. Six years old, you face a few challenges. The school you're in cocoons you and makes you believe that bats are butterflies and birds are fairies. At the age of eight to ten, physiotherapists decide to put you in a power chair because they think that it will help your independence. Don't do it. You know, it is around that time that you've started to go to basketball. You do wheelchair basketball in your manual chair and you've got your coach there and he's super proud of you because you're speeding around the court you know trying to hit the hoop one day at eight or nine you arrive at school you're called in by a physiotherapist who wants an assessment session from you so they give you a new pair of splints you wear them unwillingly because they're super heavy and they advise you and your parents that being in a power chair will be the best for you and your independence. Uh-uh, don't do it. That's the second biggest regret of your life. This is my wheelchair! There are many like it, but this one is mine! Without me, my wheelchair is useless! Without my wheelchair, I am useless! Shut up! Because you know what? You're going to lose strength in your arms, in your upper body. And you won't be able to be as physically able as you want to be. Although the thought of using a power chair might seem exciting. Don't do it. Please don't do it. Anyway, let's move on because I don't want to make this video extra long. At the age of 12, you face your first surgery. Get on with it. Yes, get on with it. It was on your hamstrings. And you go into the surgery with a leap of faith because you don't want to be a disappointment to your parents because at the moment they can't accept your disability. They want you to be walking up and about doing things like normal people. It's going to take a while for them to uh, accept who you are, but they will accept it. But you went into that surgery with a leap of faith, hoping that a miracle will occur. And when you do come out, you're not on crutches. You'll never be on crutches. Why? I don't know. 
it's just life. You're going to face a lot of people who are going to want to fix you. You need to shut the fuck up! I'm trying to be nice about this, and maybe then people are not trying to be nasty when they are saying it, but they don't realize that your your perception of their comment might come across differently to you. Who could blame you, right? Why the fuck not? You learn to be around the best and ignore the rest. Three years from that point, you have another surgery. This time on your abductors, your parents and your family around you. Have this sense of hope that this time you're going to be up and about walking, the same result occurs. Nothing changes. Just slow and steady improvements. A few things physically. Because nothing major happens, you're gonna feel like you've let a lot of people down, which is gonna cause you to go through a bit of a mild depression. Thinking you're not good enough. Thinking, why me? Thinking, where did I go wrong here? As a matter of fact, your future self is telling you that you're not in the wrong. This isn't something you can do very much about. You know, as these surgeries occur, you start to accept yourself and try to adapt to what God has given you and deal with your cards at hand to the best of your abilities while others around you are still struggling. You're gonna go through mild depression, thinking that you'll never amount to anything, you'll never achieve anything, because for once, for one thing, you weren't able to accomplish what was wanted. And I'm not saying that you could have done something, it's impossible. There's gonna be a point where a few months after your last surgery, you will decide to ignore everything and anything the doctors are telling you, quit going to physiotherapy, not have good attendance at school, and just let go of everything. But you want to know something? Hear it from me, from your future self, because I am telling you not to do that. That may be one of your biggest regrets in life, and I'm telling you, don't do it. At age... 17. You decide to leave the school you've been attending for 13 years. It's nerve-wracking. I know, you're gonna feel super nervous. You're gonna feel isolated because at the moment what you have right now, it feels like you're part of a family. But you'll be okay in a way. There's that inner strength about you that helps you to carry on. As the years go by, you grow stronger and stronger. You attend a college that only houses able-bodied people. And you know what? There will only be one other disabled person alongside you. It's an interesting experience. This is one of the first times where you truly discover yourself. What you're good at, what you're not good at, what you can do, what you can't do. Spend a good three years studying your GCSEs, your A-levels, you develop a major interest in film. As your future self, I want to tell you to continue with that interest. Go along with your interest in film and don't sway. Because as soon as you sway, you'll get lost. Stay strong, stick at it, work really hard on the film production side of things and develop true passion for the making of film and for the craft of film. Your media studies teacher actually uh, sees potential. Towards the end of your college degree, you're going to say, Oh, I think I want to write for a magazine and be a published writer with a byline. No! No! Stay with film. You get more satisfaction out of film production and post-production than you would out of 
writing. For some reason, you decide to pursue this career as a, as a magazine journalist throughout your uni years too. And as your future self, I can't help but wonder why you do that. Just because a few teachers said that you have good potential to become a good writer. Please don't. You graduate from college, you graduate from uni. In 2009, you get a 2.2. When I know in your head, you're saying to yourself, damn, I should have got a 2.1, you know, a B plus on that thesis on female heroism in Hollywood. You were so rooting for that B. At least you graduated. That's something, right? A lot of people may irritate you by saying, Oh, that's so inspiring. No inspiration here, folks. You're you and I'm your future self. To be honest, I'm proud of you for getting as far as you have. A few years later, you become an auntie to a beautiful baby boy and he grows attached to you and you do everything in your power to be that perfect role model. For him, you want to make sure that he doesn't grow up closed-minded about disabled people. You want to make sure that he gets the encouragement that you didn't really get as a kid in terms of finding the best career. Dream out yourself through his birth, you meet your best friend, your rock. He will be there for you. Right now, today, your best friend is the one that will bring out the best in you. I'm not pursuing a career in magazine journalism. I'm more of a video editor. And that's what I should have stuck at years ago. I didn't then. But I will now. You stay strong, past self. Don't let anyone tell you that you're not capable of doing something. Because they're wrong. They're so wrong. But the more these people tell you their opinion, the stronger you'll be. Let them talk. Let them chit-chat amongst themselves. You know the real you. Anyone else who genuinely cares about you knows the real you. You stick at what you're doing. You become the best you can be. Don't be an inspiration for disabled people. Show that we are just capable as able-bodied people. You can do it. I have the utmost faith in you. Stay strong, be happy, be yourself, and don't let anyone tell you different. I wanted to make this video because I felt it was important to reflect on life. It's a way for you guys to get to know me and I think I've just proven to everyone around the world that I'm just as normal as you, you and you. I too have regrets. I too have shoulda, woulda, coulda. It's just like I said in one of my previous videos just like you. I really hope that you guys have taken away something from this video. I hope that this video has helped someone. Thank you for joining me in this one. I'm glad to be back. You can be sure of more videos in the future. If there's anything in particular you want to see from me, do let me know in the comments below. Until next time, guys and girls, have a really good day. This is B signing off.